The question is, could you do an example on the calculation of stress and deformation for a cylindrical shaft subjected to torsion? In this example, I'll consider a simple prismatic shaft. This is the problem that I have chosen here. We have a simple solid prismatic cylindrical shaft AB, which is fixed at point A and attached to a belt system at point B. The radius of the pulley that carries the belt is 50 millimeter. The tension on the belt is 4 kN on one side and 2 kN on the other side. The shear modulus of the material that makes up the shaft is given, 80 gigapascal. And these are the questions. First, we want to find the maximum shear stress in the shaft. Then we want to find the shear stress at a radius of 20 millimeter. Then we want to find the maximum shear strain in the shaft. And finally, we want to find the angle of twist at point B. Just to refresh our knowledge on the pertinent equations here, this is the summary um, slide that I had in the theory video. We know the shear strain varies linearly with the radius rho starting from zero at the center. The shear stress does the same. The stress produced by the torque, the shear stress produced by the torque is marked on this differential element, which is taken at a point like this. So the only non-zero stress component induced by a torque like this is the shear stress. And more specifically, this is tau x theta, shear stress on the x plane in the theta direction. Here is the torsion formula for calculating the shear stress at a, at a given radius rho, tau equal t rho over j, where j is the polar moment of inertia given by this expression. The polar moment of inertia for standard sections can be found in many different uh, sources, uh, including books. For a solid circular section, it's pi r to the power of 4 over 2. We calculate the shear strain simply by dividing the shear stress by the shear modulus. When we have a shaft with a constant torque, constant radius and therefore constant polar moment of inertia, and a constant shear modulus, this is the equation for calculating the angle of twist. X here is the length of the shaft. In other words, if you take a shaft, fix it at one point and apply a torque at the other end, the other end is going to twist by this angle. And the units would be radians. So that's it. So let's go ahead and apply some of these equations for the problem at hand. Let's start with the calculation of the shear stresses. Our torsion formula has a torque in it, right? So the first thing you want to do is to calculate the internal torque in uh, the shaft AB. To do that, we're going to section the shaft at, at an arbitrary point such as point D and separate the shaft into two parts, the left part and the right part. We complete the free body diagram for one of the two parts, and here you can see it's convenient to take this right side over here. If you were to consider the left side, first you need to find the support reaction at point A. You don't need to do that if you were to consider the right side. Let's go ahead and mark the internal torques as TAB. It's good to have a sign convention, even though we have a simple shaft. This will allow us to know the directions of the shear stress and the angle of twist unambiguously once calculated. Of course, the sign conventions are a lot more important when you have a uh, segmented shaft. Here, this is the sign convention that I have selected. A counterclockwise torque with respect to this x-axis is positive. In other words, you can use the right-hand rule to figure this out. If you were to hold your thumb in the direction of x, then the, uh, the torque should be in the direction of the fingers for it to be positive. And of course, on the right side, the torque is going to be in the opposite direction with the same magnitude, TAB. We use the equilibrium equation for the right side to find a value for TAB. Our equilibrium equation here is a torque equation. We're going to sum up the torques in the uh, uh, counterclockwise direction and set the sum to zero. TAB acts in the clockwise direction. Remember torque is nothing more than moment and moment is force multiplied by the distance perpendicular to the line of action of the force, right? The distance perpendicular to the line of action of four kilonewton is the radius and similarly, the distance perpendicular to two kilonewton is also the radius of the pulley, right, which is 50 millimeter. The torque due to 4 kilonewton is 4 kilonewton multiplied by 0.05 uh, 
meters. The direction is counterclockwise. And similarly, the torque due to 2 kilonewton is 2 kilonewton multiplied by 0.05, but it acts in the clockwise direction on the shaft. Simplifying this, we get a value of 0.1 kilonewton meter for the torque TAB. And it goes without saying that TAB is constant throughout. I could have taken the section at any point between A and B, and I would have come up with the same value, right? And therefore, TAB is constant throughout. Next, I want to calculate the polar moment of inertia. This could be calculated as part of the torsion formula, right in the formula. But since we need this one more time in calculating the angle of twist, it's convenient to calculate this ahead of time. Remember, we had a formula in the earlier slide, right? J equals a half time pi times r to the power of 4. So you substitute numbers here and I come up with 1.272 times 10 to the minus 6 meter to the power of 4 for j. Now we can use the uh, torsion formula to calculate the shear stresses. So let's calculate tau max first. Tau max is TAB times r over j, where r is the, the maximum radius of the cross section, which is the radius of the shaft, which is 30 millimeter, right? So we have values for each of the parameters in that equation. You put, substitute them uh, in consistent units, and we come up with 2.36 multiplied by 10 to the 3, um, and the units will be kilopascal. You see kilonewton here, and this meter and that meter gives you meter squared in the numerator, meter to the power of 4 in the denominator, so we get kilonewton per meter squared, which is kilopascal, right? And since uh, we have this multiple multiplier here, we could express this as a megapascal. So maximum shear stress in the cross section is 2.36 megapascal. We also wanted to calculate the shear stress at a radius of 20 millimeters, right? Since tau varies linearly with rho, starting from zero at the center of the shaft, we have two, two options here. We can simply use a proportionality rule to calculate the shear stress at this radius, like I have done here, or you can start from scratch and uh, calculate it um, uh, using this formula. To, to use the proportionality rule, what I did was I took the maximum shear stress, which is 2.36 megapascal, and then multiply that by 20 divided by 30. 20 is the radius at which we want the shear stress. 30 is the radius at which the maximum shear stress occurs, right? All right, so, so basically two-thirds of uh, the tau max is uh, the tau at r equals 20 millimeters. So you get 1.57 megapascal for that. Our next question is to calculate the maximum shear strain in the shaft. So we use the Hooke's law for that. Ga gamma max would be tau max over g. That came from tau max equals g times gamma max, right? All right, so uh, tau max is 2.36 megapascal. G is 80 gigapascal, so I want to convert that into megapascal by multiplying that by 10 to the 3, and that gives us this value, right? Now, if I were to multiply that by 100, I can express the shear strain as a percentage, so we get 0 0.00295 percentage. Now, let's calculate the angle of twist of point B. Since point A is fixed, the angle of twist of point B simply come from the twist of uh, the shaft from A to B. So let's call that as phi AB. This is our formula for angle of twist, TL over GJ. And of course, this needs to be evaluated for the shaft from A to B. Here are some relevant numbers from the earlier slide. The torque is 0.1 kilonewton meter. L, the length of the shaft from A to B is 1.5 meters. The shear modulus is 80 gigapascal. Let's convert that into kilonewton meter per meter squared. And J is 1.272 times 10 to the minus 6 meter to the power of 4. Now you can see all units cancel out to give you the angle of twist in radian the way it's supposed to be. So you get a value of 0 0.00147 radians for uh, phi B. And now you can convert that into... Uh, decrease by multiplying this by 180 degrees divided by pi radians, right? So you get 0.085 degrees for that.